just because Xavier d'Anglemont and he's going to the Virgen del Rocío University Hospital in uh, University of uh, Sevilla and he's going to talk about pharmacological stimulation of endogenous GDNF in the striatum towards uh, future neuroprotective therapy in Parkinson's disease. Thank you. Well, uh, good morning. Uh, thanks to the, the organizing committee to let me uh, present the, the last talk of this like very dense uh, session. So I will go like straight to, to the point because uh, we don't have like much time here. Uh, the uh, glial cell line derived neurotrophic factor, which is also called like GDNF, is the most potent uh, neurotrophic factor on the uh, dopaminergic neurons here. Uh, it is very well known to act uh, in the striatum and there provide uh, trophic clues uh, to the uh, dopaminergic neurons. And GDNF has this ability to restore and repair those damaged uh, DNA neurons. And this is true in uh, animal models. Uh, this is like very well established. But in human, the, uh, the picture is uh, quite more complicated uh, because GDNF doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier. So uh, its administration is, uh, uh, is, has been made difficult and clinical trials haven't been uh, clear on its possible use as a therapy. So the good news here is that GDNF also is also produced uh, naturally in the, in the brain. And in uh, mice with uh, genetic ablation of the GDNF gene here, uh, you can see that when you uh, decrease the GDNF levels in striatum uh, down to like about 10%, you have a dramatic decrease of the, or dramatic loss of the dopaminergic neurons. And that shows how important uh, GDNF is uh, in the brain. But uh, remarkably, we also know which cells are producing GDNF in the striatum. And this is a subset of GABAergic uh, interneurons called uh, pavalbumin neurons, PV neurons. And they account for uh, over 95% of the GDNF production in the, in the, in the striatum. So knowing this, we are interested in uh, trying to improve and induce the production of GDNF uh, endogen endogenously. And for this, we, we, we've made this uh, um, observation and we thought that it would be important to uh, understand what makes the PV neurons so special so that they produce GNF and they are the only ones here in the striatum. So based on the observation that uh, there are other PV neurons in the brain, like if we look at the, at the cortex here, uh, PV neurons are a legion, but they do not produce GNF. So we decided to compare side by side uh, the PV neurons from the striatum and the PV neurons from the cortex. And these experiments have been uh, made, carried out by a PhD student in our lab, uh, Daniel Enteria Morales, and it was like very simple. We uh, sorted the PV interneurons uh, from uh, PV reporter mice, and by a pip pipeline and very like, controlled experiments, we, we came across, uh, well, we analyzed by a few metrics and microarray uh, analysis. And, well, gene ontology data uh, showed us that uh, uh, one uh, intracellular signaling pathway is apparently like a, a very important in these neurons, which is a, a cyclic uh, adeno adenosine monophosphate, CAMP. And based on this, we decided to uh, try to stimulate the production of a cyclic AMP or use this pathway and see whether we could uh, have a, any effect on the GDNF. So we used uh, ex vivo uh, brains, so these are like a floating brain sections uh, alive, 
and we uh, stimulated them with like a different like a, a synthetic uh, cyclic AMP or phoscholine, which will uh, here uh, induce or activate the uh, adenyl cyclase. That doesn't work. Yes. And uh, we obtain uh, like a very robust effect on uh, GDNF uh, expression and production. So basically, like uh, increasing cyclic AMP in the in the parvalurine in ten year olds led to an increase of uh, GDNF here. And as well, if we are like uh, blocking the phosphodiesterase uh, action, which normally like degrade the uh, cyclic AMP, we also like obtain a, 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 a quite a robust uh, effect. Also, uh, dibutyl uh, cyclic AMP and phoscholine have a, a nicer effect. But remarkably, this effect is also, uh, I mean, these drugs also work on a very different model, which, is, I mean, here we use like uh, in vitro carotid body cells that also uh, produce GDNF, and we obtain pretty much the same results. So this is like a shared mechanism. And uh, we also, I mean, I, I cannot really develop on this, but we, we also think that uh, the effect of a cyclic AMP doesn't, is not uh, dependent on Krebs, but uh, depends on uh, extracellular calcium entry into the cell. But if we come back to the transcriptomic uh, analysis, we um, identified a series of uh, genes that are like uh, very specific to uh, Striatal PV interneurons. And by qPCR uh, analysis, we could see that they are like uh, so specific that um, they, are, they are like uh, really interesting. And I will just like uh, present you like a couple of uh, receptors. These are like uh, G protein coupled receptors, and they are uh, in theory linked to adenine cyclase. They can uh, modulate. Uh, the production of uh, CAMP. We also have uh, discovered another receptor, which is like a, a tyrosine kinase receptor. Uh, we don't really know what it, it will do in the cell, but uh, you will just see that uh, it, it has some particular interest as well. Um, we also validated our data uh, by a, a technique which is called like RNS, but it's sort of uh, in situ hybridization, like very specific and selective. And for example, like GPR83, which was an orphan receptor. Uh, up to two years ago is uh, very specific to the uh, GDNF producing cells. And we also like discovered LHX8, which is a, a transcription factor. It, its role is uh, absolutely not known in the um, uh, adult uh, brain, but it, also, it is also specific uh, of the PV interneurons. But LHX, and that's why we, we, we have a particular interest with, with uh, this uh, fact, uh, transcription factor, is it shares exactly the same uh, specific uh, expression in the human brain here. So uh, it is highly expressed in the striatum and, some, and, and slightly in the hypothalamus and the substantia in nominata, which is exactly the same as in the uh, mouse brain. So, uh, we are like starting now to, to study its uh, function in the PV inter neurons. Uh, as well, I uh, come back to the uh, kit, uh, C kit, which is like a proton codeine uh, receptor. We have no idea what, what it's doing in the PV inter neurons, but remarkably, uh, its um, expression profile in the PV inter neurons is. Uh, conserved and uh, the same in the non-human primate brain, which we think that uh, it could be uh, as well uh, the same in the human brain. So, and this is also telling us that maybe all the other genes that we've discovered in the PV internal ones uh, might also be conserved uh, in the human brain. So we have to investigate this as well. And uh, finally, because I mentioned you some like GPCR uh, receptors, uh, which are normally like a link to the adenyl cyclase. Well, we use like three different agonists of these receptors, like uh, TAC, uh, TACR3, uh, GPR83 again, and uh, the melanocortin 3 receptor. And by using these agonists uh, ex vivo, actually we can only uh, inhibit the expression of GDNF, which is 
what, not what we want it to do. This is a contrary, but at least we do it very specifically. So there is probably a way to uh, increase GDNF uh, just by acting uh, specifically on the PV inter neurons. So that's, that's quite important, uh, but that's not what we wanted to do at the, at the very beginning. So just like coming to the conclusions now, as you can read, I mean, I hope that we, you've been convinced that GDNF, endogenous GDNF is, is important, and we can, in theory, uh, turn it up by uh, acting directly on the PV internal neurons. And these PV internal neurons will probably, or hopefully, share some uh, specific features uh, uh, between the uh, mouse brain and the human brain. So there is like a, like a, quite a big hope on this. And we think that we could, uh, at the end of the day, but in quite a long-term uh, project, uh, specifically uh, provide a new protective therapy uh, based on endogenous GDNF. And we think it's possible. So the last uh, slide, just to um, acknowledge uh, uh, the people who worked, especially like uh, Professor Jose Lopez Barneo, who is the head of our lab, and uh, Daniel Enteria and Yvette Lopez Lopez, who have uh, done most of the, the work and collaborators and, and funding as well. So thank you very much. Thank you, Xavier. Xavier, very nice. I really like it. So I wonder, so do you know anything uh, regarding the relationship between Neural activity, neural activity, and and GDNF release. So, you know, because uh, PV uh, neurons they, they have a very high activity. So, yes, what is known? What is, so, what is known about that? Well, uh, not much actually. So, we we also uh, wanted at some point to uh, modulate their uh, um, spiking activity to to see whether they will have like any effect on the GDNF release. That's why we, <clears throat> we imported the uh, channel loadouts into uh, tomato, mice, uh, but we haven't done it yet. So we think that maybe, I mean, as well as I presented before, like a cyclic AMP is uh, linked to the calcium, uh, extracellular calcium entry into the cell. So like, maybe like, uh, by acting on these uh, calcium channels, we could have an effect, but we think that uh, just a pharmacological agonist or antagonist of uh, those receptors that we have might uh, result to a better effect on GDNF. But, yeah, well, actually, like, yeah. just to answer to you, your question, yeah, sure, we don't no, no. know. Yeah, yeah, we don't know, but we, do, are you aware of any kind of mouse model or situation in which you have a defect in the PV, so, and then you, you would have a secondary, let's say, Parkinson-like? Uh, no, 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 I don't. Okay, no, no, very nice.